as defined by a group of people, which a conditional use permit would be. Okay. So we wanted to be more clear on what things were permitted and try to minimize the use of conditional use permits and establish a process where we can establish what what are accepted practices out there. Okay. Um, the next one, number four, my only comment on that is you wanted to remedy existing non-conformities that the county commissioners took out the opt-out. So that's was, in my opinion, the best way to get rid of that. So I see that it's there, I kind of understand, but I wish the opt-out was back. Um, the next one, on number five, it says document specific health, safety, and general welfare. How long do you document it? Who documents it? Do you guys document yeah, it? Yeah. What, what the intent of this was is that we have codes and we say it's going to be dealing with health, safety, general welfare. We need to be able to explain what we need to do. So it's actually going, instead of us just having a, a land use code change, we want to go and say, here's the land use code, code change and here's the justification for that. We agree or disagree with the justification, but we want to go on record that we actually had a reason for that change. Okay. Um, next one of the proposed objective two zoning, it says zoning, ensure that zoning balances property rights. What do you mean by balance? So it's the next little thing down, like the next headline, <coughs> under the next headline. Well, it's the same prop, it's the same balancing act again, is that our zoning should, should basically balance with for protecting the health, safety, and general welfare. It's this balancing act and everything we do. So it's not overreaching. It's not overly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Well, that's not an opinion, but okay. Yeah, I mean, it, what, what, sure. Yeah, that, that, that's, again, he's well, a that's policy. that's why I'm here, is to have that discussion. Yeah. Right, right, right. Opinion yeah. Is. And we appreciate the comments. Yeah. Because we look at it one way, you look at it a different way. Right, and that's and why I'm asking yeah, questions. Yeah, that's great. Okay, under proposed policies on the same page, the second one down, it says adopt zoning which avoids downsizing. What is this? Downsizing. Why are we avoiding it? Uh, that's a good one because you know, that's always been a problem. If somebody is, has a piece of property that's zoned commercial, no one wants to take that commercial right away and down zone to residential if there's a perceived value difference. But it doesn't happen very often, but what we want to do is avoid doing that, avoid being in the position where we're, we're taking something from some, somebody, unless there's a general welfare or public safety concern involved. Okay. It's hard to, it's hard to get to the concrete part of it. Right, that. that's why I was thinking this was my main thought was super vague. Okay, skipping down like a whole paragraph on the proposed objective three takings, proposed policies, it's number two says avoid adopting our application of land use regulations in a manner which could be deemed regular free taking. What is regular taking? That's a process that the Attorney General has he has a pretty lengthy opinion in Idaho Code that determines what a taking is. And so there's a, actually a process that they put in a paper that has a series of things that you have to find and do when you do a regulation that, uh, I'm just giving you a bunch of gobbledygook. But, but <laughs> well, the Idaho Code already has the regulation, why do we need to add on another layer of regulation? There's a simpler way to think of it. Right. Regulatory right. thinking is a term attorneys use right. <laughs> to, to say that you've met the bar for take, going too far. The government's gone too far. Okay. Okay. All right, on the bottom of page two, where it says proposed goal to monitor and measure Measure population. How is this done? Through the census? Census primarily. Yeah. Census primarily. Okay. We, we want to use all of data. We want to use known sources. Yeah. If it's federal government, state government, local, we want to use it and we want to just link to it. Building so constantly yeah. updated. Yeah. All right. I'll actually skip to page four. Okay. But then there's a page where I'll do a bunch of questions again. Yeah. Um, I agree with the previous speaker. It's under economic development, proposed policies is number four. It says, review regulations for home-based businesses and cottage industries in the rural area county. I thought, why only rural? And if the state's regulating it, why do we also have to add another layer 
of bureaucracy, you guys should consider striking that out if it's already covered under the state. You know, I'm all, less regulation is better. So, please consider that. All right, page five. <gasps> It's about halfway down. It says proposed land use objective one B rural community. Yeah. Um, proposed policies number one encourage preservation of open space and a rural residential lifestyle. What do you mean by open space? Parks or just farmland? Like, is there a specific definition of that? I'm not sure there, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't remember if it was or not, I mean, to be honest with you. It could be both. It could be both. What it, what it was is that when we do things, we're trying to keep, if you if you want to have a rural lifestyle, there's some things that um, people define that in, of what that is. And open space is, and, and the city of recreation, we said we also have a policy of, County to look at purchasing space in the county if they want to for parks or whatever else. But right, and I have a, I think there, I think it's a county park. It could be City Close yeah. Falls coming into where I am. Yeah, and so, this so I just want to clarify which one was. This was more of non parks, it was more of housing, community development. The C Cluster housing. Um, yeah, I have a question about that. Yeah, I know, but, but okay. again, 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 these are not land use. These are just visionary, aspirational, as some would say, I yeah. think. But that's I'm, I'm just asking because yeah. what I'm reading would be different than not. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. All right. The next page, page six. Yeah. Um, proposed land objective use number three. And num under number one, you say establish or warranted various rural residential zones after reviewing existing zoning parcel sizes. Why is parcel sizes under there? To me, that's more of a ULUC thing than a count plan thing. But. I think the concept is when we were looking at that was at some point in time, we need to look at land use patterns. So the parcel size may be a part of the land use pattern. So the parcel size in Bayview is significantly smaller than the parcel size around Apple. So you'd have to look at those things when you try to determine the appropriate zoning for property that wants to be zoned a certain way. Okay. You may not want five acre zoning in an area like Bayview, and you may not want small lots like they have in Bayview in Apple. You know, just those types of things. Okay. And then in that same section number three, halfway through, I'm not gonna read the whole sentence, where it talks about fostering rural character. So are the standards fostering rural character? Is the planning and zoning? Is the comp plan fostering rural character? Well, the comp plan, one of the, I it think one of the policies in there is to, to determine publicly, collectively, amongst ourselves, what do we mean by rural character? And then develop policies that foster that rural character and put those into our land use regulations. Okay. Because that's a huge thing that we have not done. Yeah, I'm not sure if we should. Well, I'll leave that one. Okay, next, proposed land use objective four. It's the under proposed policies number, well, two and three kind of put together. Um, when you mentioned the cluster housing <laughs> with my previous question, does that mean those little mini homes? No, what, no, what does no, cluster no, housing no. mean? Does it mean where they all open up into a common space? Well, yeah. Cluster housing, I actually live in a place that could probably be classified as cluster housing is that the homes are on smaller lots with, uh, surrounded by um, conservation easements and a common area. So it was a design to put the houses together to, to give more open space by that definition of that. Okay. But it was not, this is not tiny homes. This, is, this goes back to what Colin was talking about is, is when you look at, at where subdivisions or others are built, there are ways of sometimes if, if you, once we define what rural character means, there may be better ways to improve things that support the rural character. So not building everything, by building things closer together, you could end up 
having a much more open space for the community to enjoy. Summer, are you familiar with how Corbin Hill is set up? Yeah. Is, that would be considered like a cluster. That was Corbin. a very good thing. They, they have one to two acre lots, but they have a 40 acre area that's open space. Okay. So it's like that. And I missed it, I got number two right before that. Why do we need to develop regulations regarding resource lands and wildlife habitat? Well, from my point of view, I know Forest Service did that. Bureau of Land Management did is that. Why is why is the county need to do that regarding other agencies that are doing that? That just seems a little out of our purview if we already have two other agencies doing that, so I don't understand why it's in there. Right over here, number two is objective four. I jumped out from the objective four is the policy number two. Okay. Um, on the same page down one, proposed land use objective five, commercial development. Yep. Under the first proposed policy, encourage limited commercial development. Who gets to decide when it's limited or how it's limited? Well, is that the county commissioner? Yeah, I'm just wondering. I mean, okay. it, would be, it would be, ultimately, David, I believe, would be the county. I mean, someone would, the zoning was determined what could go in there. And then if it's a variance to that, it would be approved through a hearing examiner right now. Okay. If it would help, Mr. Chairman, the way I read this is you're saying to encourage, the starting point is that it's only limited commercial development in the first place. Right. It, 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 so if, if limited commercial development works, then it should be complementary to a rural character. Right, and that's what the intent of this was, <coughs> is that we did not want to have a big smelter plant. No, or whatever. Or a shopping mall. Or a shopping mall. We wanted to have something that fit within the rural character. So that this was actually a limiting factor. So you might want to reword that because to me, I have some friends out in Apple. They love Super One. I wouldn't want something like that. Right. Coming in where everybody's like, oh my gosh, I've got right. Super but One. But the intent was to not to have that. Okay, so you might want to consider rewording that. No, nothing against Super One. No, like some communities may want it and some may no. not. Okay, page seven. <laughs> proposed land use objective six, industrial development, including mining. Um, under proposed policies number two, um, I don't understand why we need this. This is one of those, I thought there already state and federal regulations for standards and regulations regarding the agricultural industry. And do we have confined animal feeding operations in Cody County? I know that, but that's always been a concern. I don't think we'll ever get it. Because that would be like a feedlot. Yeah, like that's right. Rate. The thinking was just to anticipate that so that at least you minimally address it before it comes so that if it does establish itself, at least you've got some regulation in place to set some side of our school. And it's kind but of like there, are, there aren't other state regulations on that? There are state regulations on CAFOs. In, but I think the identification of and when you hit those limits is something that we should consider. Just like Dr. Moon said, uh, we should be proactive in some of these things so that if we want that, we should be very aware of what it means. And if we don't want that, we should take steps to make sure that we don't get that. And I understand that to me. I'm just concerned if we already got state and federal and we add on another layer of regulation, that's where I start to get concerned. Right. So, and my, that would be the same comment for the next paragraph down, number three, because I thought all the mining stuff was already regulated at the state and federal level pretty strictly. But maybe I'm not as informed on that. Most of our mining is uh, mineral extraction, rock, yeah. sand, gravel. And they are regulated. Yeah. All right, down on the next one, proposed land use objective 7A, public resources. Um, number three, where it talks about shoreline management plans. Um, don't we already have that? No? Okay. That's one of the, that's one of those things that we put that in there because that that has always been a hot button button, what happens around the shorelines, but we've never really developed a concise public policy. What does that mean? What, I'm what just is, concerned if it isn't. Worded right, it'll 
Chaparral. Uh, that's right. what, what it's in here for is that we all need to sit down and this is a policy that the public yeah. needs to sit down and come up with what they mean by shoreline management yeah. and then develop regulations that meet that particular vision. Yeah. And so it may not work, but we need to do it. If you think about the policy, really, it get, we need the authority, I use the word authority, maybe if not too technically correct, we need the authority to, in the future, develop a code that would address this. So, the, so what a policy does is basically, it's not the answer to the question of what the, poli what the regulation could be for this shoreline. But it gives us, when we go and do a, like when the omnibus we talked about before, the one thing we did when we reviewed the omnibus that will be having a public hearing next month, I believe it is, is we went to every change and said, is it consistent with the, with the comprehensive plan? Yeah. So when, when, it, when this is implemented and approved, any future land use code change will have to go back to this and we have to be able to find a, a policy that basically says we should develop um, a shoreline management plan. And then the code will be based on what the people at the time think are the right policy or codes for that at that time. So that's why, again, sometimes these are maybe not as specific as people think they should be. On the other hand, the more, the narrower you make it, what ends up happening is it limits your ability in the future to do things for the citizens of the county. Mm -hmm. So when, what we try to do here is have that right spectrum where we're not, that we'll be able to do things, plan we should be able to do things in the future. And the land use code will be approved based on public income also. Well, I'm off less is more person, but right. that's my yes, opinion. Um, get down to number six. Why are we adding new sheds in? If you guys don't know who Mark Bonetta is, look it up. From what I've read, a view shed is if your property, you know, I'm here, the lake's here, and a neighbor's in front of mine. If I, if my neighbor builds a barn I don't like, I can complain about it because I'm affecting their property values and their view shed. That needs to be taken out. You're going to get fought on that. If you haven't listened to Martha Bonetta and View Sheds, I can give you my email and I'll send you the video on it. She won a 10 year long battle with her county back east. That really, really needs to be taken out. It's not property rights friendly. I understand that we need to be good neighbors and not build weird stuff on our property that offends people. You know, try to think of our neighbors and be conscientious, but View Sheds, that really, really needs to be taken out. Uh, page eight, uh, about halfway down. Proposed land use objective of eight public facilities. What do you mean? It says harmonized with an area's natural landscape and rural character. What do you mean by natural landscape? That just this is another one of those crashes that's way too big. And what do you mean by harmonized? Because what I think harmonized, what you think harmonized, what someone else thinks harmonized is that's so vague. I don't like how big it is, because you could apply it differently than like if I would. Right, but again, the code yeah. will determine what that means. And besides the code, where, wherever the location is, will have a different landscape than, than another location. But who decides the harmony? Well, ultimately, in the public hearing people have an opinion, proposals will be made, uh, hearing examiners will look at it. We don't, we don't consider these things. Yeah. Uh, and ultimately, the, the county commissioners will decide it, and then that's appealed by the district court level. But each circumstance is slightly different. We have a really varied county here in yeah. terms of ge geography. Yeah. So that interpretation of what harmonizes will fluctuate. Yeah, and that's what I'm concerned about. Yeah. Okay, on the very bottom, a like conserving land characteristics. To me, that's kind of like the natural landscape. What does that mean? What do you mean by land characteristics? Where, where are you saying? The very last bottom, it's the first three words on the very last line of page eight. Protecting water from protecting. It says conserving land characteristics as well integrity, but what do you mean by land 
characteristics. It's a, it's, a, it's a summary of the natural resource. Yeah, and, and, the summary, got, and then you have to go into the, the, that's just a summary, then you have to go into the policies where it should be addressed. Can you please sit down? Well, oh, okay. You know, this is, what, what this is, this is really just a summary of what we right. would be easier for people to see. And I'm seeing it on the next page. Yeah, so okay. the next page is where the policy wants to be there. Okay, on page nine, it's proposed goal one, natural resources, it's the proposed objective one, reduce air quality degradation during land development and construction. Does that include farming? And like, you know, Our burning? Farming is protected by the state. So we don't regulate farming activities, but uh, many times grading and uh, land shaping activities should be regulated to prevent uh, fugitive dust and particulate matter. Okay. Um, under proposed objective number two, proposed policies number three, I would once again, that open space phrase maybe define it a little better less vague since that can be taken many different ways. You're absolutely right, Summer. That can be taken many different ways, but you know, that's about the best we could come up with for trying to describe those things that we find attractive, which in, in our area right here, it really is the open space. We may not own it, but we enjoy that vision. And so we, we, we need to work towards somehow keeping that because it's valuable to us. But are we positive how we're gonna do that? No. Um, under proposed objective number three, proposed policies number two, says determine areas adjacent to water bodies that are environmentally sensitive. Who determines that? I think the public does. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that when I talked about around the shoreline, we all have ideas. What does that mean? What is what is our collective consciousness when it comes to dealing with shoreline? What is valuable for us to retain? But I, I get concerned with the collective versus the individual property rights. We got to make sure we balance that it's out. A, it's a real balancing act. Yeah. It really is. Uh, an additional source for that would be you're on number two. one under two. Yeah. Uh, objective three number two. Objective three number um, two. <coughs> Department, the Department of Environmental Quality has large studies, you know, where we have degraded water. Right, I thought maybe you were referring to those that talked about. Yeah, I mean, we have some consideration of whatever right. evidence they supply as well as local knowledge, and you kind of mix it all together and come up with some <laughs> kind of care or something like that. It's kind of like less damaging to the water quality, okay. which is a common ownership. All right, page 10, I'll get shorter, I promise this is right away for after other people. <laughs> um, proposed objective number four, the first proposed policy. It says work with wildlife management agencies to identify critical wildlife habitats and travel corridors. I've not known of any travel corridors that have been successful. You know, animals migrate where they want to migrate. I would consider striking that out. A lot of that tends to involve an amended domain or getting conservation easements on private property. And to me, I, I just, again, I perceive that to be more of a Idaho Forest Service domain than a common land domain, so that's just my opinion. I mean, they've done, I forget where it is it out there, I'll just bring it to the wildlife travel corridor. Yeah, as far I as I can tell, no one's used it. Yeah. I, I think out. one of the things <laughs> that we see in here a lot too, and, and we're not saying we're going, to, we're going to work with wildlife management agencies. You'll see a lot in here about coordinate with and work with. Some things that we do not have the control over, we do think it's important that David's organization voice. work with them so we do have a voice in what they do. But like for me as a citizen, in my personal opinion, I want that out. I would want our county to say, no, we're not doing well, but, that, but that means that means work with means that if we if we do if that's we do, not how I read it. That's why I was trying to that. That means if I saw it a different way, oh, that means I had the legal okay to go ahead and do that. That's why I was reading that. 
you're taking it to be that we're going to work affirmatively work with them. Right. We're going to be we're going to support it and go and do it. Yeah. And this was intended to be coordinate with work with. Different adjective, maybe? Yeah, it's a different word. Yeah. Maybe it's a different word. Now I understand what you mean. Yeah. Okay.
that an aviation easement or an aviation easement? <laughs> it's a real word that I never heard of. It is? <laughs> okay. I, never I heard thought of it. it was a I'm just going around. I'm like, wow, there's a misspelling in the cop plan. So, so what is that thing? Because I didn't have a chance to research that one. I know the other it's one. A, it's an air ride. 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 Was for a portion of the airspace for the roads to an airplane. Yes. Okay, so we all learned it. All right. Thank you for putting up with me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We appreciate the feedback. No, sorry. That's what you mentioned. You asked a lot of questions. Yes. Which is good. That's what we're here. But then numerous times you started to say, well, in my opinion, that's what I want to hear is what, what your opinion is. You know, you trailed off and we never really heard what your opinion was. I, I wanted to get you all the questions though. I didn't want to. So, but I'm asking you now to go home and mm -hmm. put those opinions that you trailed off on on the paper and submit them to Sandy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And for me, it's just less regulation and when there's areas where we already have federal and state, I would prefer we not have county. I would less regulation. Let me ask you it's just better. a simple question. Yes. Is, is this what? better than what we had before? Or the consolidation? Well, you put the view shed in there, and honestly, that really pissed me off, and it's in the omnibus, too. So I'll be very vocal about that. The view shed thing's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Hey. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I live in Spirit Lake. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Get you can get exactly right.
commissioners. Deborah Rose is really in it. To make sure that we looked at that. Um, Pat Gray went through the regulations and all that, we, and we did that. So I think the issue we're probably more diversified in geographic um, distribution today than we were two years ago. We probably would have more. Each other. I might add to this. You know, I'm not sure that that's the. I'm not sure we should worry so much about geographic diversification. It'd be nice to be sure everybody is represented that way, but philosophically, I think we need to be diverse. And the, uh, I think the Board of County Commissioners, going all the way back to when I was appointed, has done an excellent job of <clears throat> filling this board with philosophical diversity. Yeah. Well, if you, if you look at the newspaper and you see the statistics that come out in the county and different things, um, they're constantly quoting Pope Paul's Car Lane and Rathman. We don't exist up here. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, I know that, that your job is a thankless job in lots of ways. I, I wasn't playing commissioner at one time. And uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. I can't tell you, sir. I, my first home in Idaho was in Spirit Lake on 25 acres. Oh, I love the area. And I've also had a lot of property on it throughout the time that season. So I, I like this area. And I, well I, I was thinking that this was going to be more of a land use. That's correct. Right, <laughs> yeah. So when will that be? Well, no, the, no. <laughs> down the road. But I mean, as as uh, someone talked about, there's omnibus three coming up in July, so the land use is going to be continually updated as as needed. Uh, the, the comp plan obviously is much more is all policy driven. So there is a public hearing on omnibus three. You can go on the county website and get a copy. I'm assuming of omnibus three on there. Uh, again, that's. What that means is there's a lot of different changes to the code that are being presented uh, to the public on July 25th. July 25th, and we will take public input and then decide whether or not we will make um, uh, suggestions to the county commissioners to approve the proposed changes there. So that'll be that. All right, thank you. Yeah. Sir, uh, there is a group up here called Cedar Mountain Association that I've been a part of for many years that, that works to, to protect our rural environment up in this area. This lady right here in the blue shirt, if you want to leave her an email address, she can get you on that group's email list. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. No.